News 4, watching out for you. News 4 is all about getting action tonight. I check out a tip about a stolen work van that held the livelihood of an 84-year-old handyman and find it. But were his valuable tools still inside? Does Hyundai have a problem with accelerators that stick? My investigation into a St. Louis woman's wild ride catches the company's attention. And today, it hauled away her car. A wannabe Wall Street big shot is called out by News 4 Investigates, accused of stealing from his most trusting and vulnerable clients to fuel his lavish lifestyle. Good evening. If you're like us, you've been watching the snowfall all day and into tonight. That has our roads wet, and now temperatures are falling, and we're starting to hear about some ice on some roads. Missouri Highway Patrol told News 4 it has closed part of Highway 21 near Old Highway 21, that's near Barnhart, and part of Highway 61 near Wilson Road near Troy, Missouri. Those highways are too icy, especially on the overpasses. Sharon Reed is in the Fort Warren Storm Center. Well, Steve, alongside the Chief Meteorologist, Steve Templeton, you've been tracking the flurries, the temperatures all yeah. evening. What are you seeing right now? Uh, temperatures are the key, getting near and below freezing. And so that melted snow from earlier today starting to freeze over, on especially untreated spots. So it's really going to depend on how well treated some of these roads are. Take a look at a snapshot of the temperatures across the area, and you'll see temperatures hitting 31, 32 degrees. That freezing line kind of cutting right through St. Louis here. So anywhere from, where from around there, to the north and west, you're dealing with temperatures at or below freezing. Now, there's not much in the way of snow left. We've been dealing with light snow off and on throughout the night, but those flurries have really tapered off. There still may be some flurries out there. We may get back into some spotty light snow overnight tomorrow morning, but I think the key overnight and for the morning commute is temperatures and the wet pavement. So look at the temperatures again, specifically zoomed into the metro area. There's Hillsboro, Barnard, couple areas where we've had some reports of some icing and slick conditions at 32. When it's at 32 or below, that's when you can start to get that freezing. Hey, I checked in with MoDOT too, and off their website, they're kind of highlighting some of the roads out here to the northwest. Highway 61, Highway 47 that goes from Troy to Warrington to Marthasville. Notice those temperatures all around 31, 32. So I think we're in this transition zone right now where we're starting to see the wet pavement, particularly on roads that haven't been treated very well or even retreated, and they're going to start to ice over a little bit. So we need to watch that for the morning commute. We wake up, flurries mainly, a spotty light snow, but I think the slick spots will be the big deal with temperatures at or below freezing at 31 degrees and there's more snow and even flurries in the forecast. I've got some more details on that coming your way. Steve, thanks. The forewarned storm team will track the weather all night long. We will watch for any changes to the road conditions. We'll have that for you tomorrow on News 4 this morning from 430 to 7. New tonight, a weapon in school, the weapon a taser, the suspect a teacher. The Rockwood School District says a substitute teacher brought a taser into a fifth grade classroom at Kerr's Mill Elementary. Principal says they removed the taser and the teacher this morning and brought in a new substitute teacher. Steve? Sharon, News 4 gets action for a St. Louis man who had his livelihood stolen by thieves. My heart, I think, <laughs> went up through my throat. <laughs> I, I believe it did. Oh, it's just thankful to get the truck back. The 84-year-old handyman who had his van stolen got it back tonight. And it was News 4's Matt Sesney who found it. Matt, you got a tip, and it paid off. Yeah, Steve, we were actually following up with Herman Petuso about all the support he's been receiving since this happened to him. And before we left, that tip came in about where his van might be. So as we drove through his neighborhood, we spotted the van parked there in the street. The stolen van was parked along the 1300 block of Graham, just a few blocks from Herman Bertuso's house. In fact, photographer Mike Alexander and I spotted the white work van as we drove along the street before sunset, the plates matching and Herman's large ladder still on top. I'm so thankful for you. If it wasn't for you, Max, I, I don't know what I'd do. I mean, you've been so, so helpful and all the way through on this. St. Louis police, who only took the report of a stolen van over the phone, did check out the van. Unfortunately, many of Herman's tools were not inside. A carpenter by trade, Herman's livelihood was stolen from in front of his house Monday morning, just weeks after his wife died. Since our story first aired, people have left boxes of tools on the 84-year-old man's porch, and an internet fundraising effort at CrowdTilt.com has now raised over $2,000 for Herman to buy new tools. I think it's just great and grand, and, and it, there's no words to describe how it makes me feel. It just makes me feel real wonderful. It's, uh, just, 
people can be so kind and, and understanding. People making up for the thugs who made Herman a victim of crime. In Dogtown, Matt Sesney, News 4. New tonight, a group of tourists visiting St. Louis fall victim to crime almost as soon as they got here. Thieves broke into the van belonging to a group of young men from Manitoba, Canada. The hoodlums took luggage, cash and cell phones. The van was parked along Memorial Drive this afternoon as the tourists went to see the arch. Yes, we just got here and we're just touring around here and we found that there's a good place to stop and we can go and take a few pictures with the boys and uh, then we were going to go and uh, find a hotel, but uh, we weren't here for five minutes and uh, we looked and our vehicle was broken into. A federal park ranger who saw the break in chased after the thieves as they drove off, but he told News 4 he gave up the chase on the Eads Bridge when they started driving just too fast. You'll probably be wondering how this happened. A man accused of exposing himself to an 11 year old boy in a public restroom will only have to serve 120 days of house arrest and will not be put on the sex offender registry. Christopher Frank was charged with sexual misconduct for an incident in the bathroom of the Maplewood Home Depot, but he ended up pleading guilty to harassing the boy. Frank owns a marketing business, CFX. It's right next door to Marion Middle School for Girls in South St. Louis. So how did he avoid becoming a convicted sex offender? We reached out to county prosecutors today but didn't get a response. We'll stay on top of it until we get answers. New tonight, a fraternity at Washington University is suspended over claims some of its members used the N-word towards other students. The school suspended all activities for the Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternity. The WashU Student Life newspaper reports some pledges started rapping at African-American students at the dining hall and then used the N-word. A News 4 report is getting the attention of Hyundai. We told you how an SUV accelerated on its own and sent a St. Louis woman barreling down the highway at 90 miles an hour. Nervous, scared, don't want to kill myself, don't want to hurt anybody out there on the streets or the highway. Today, Hyundai towed away the vehicle. The owner says it's just too dangerous to drive. The car maker plans to put it through a thorough investigation. Russell Kinzel, you've been talking with the car owner and Hyundai. Is the car company admitting it there's a problem with this vehicle? Sharon, no, they're not, but they are sending in an engineer here through Lambert who will examine that vehicle and see what its little black box says about what happened. Is this the tip of the iceberg of acceleration problems with Hyundai vehicles? Well, that's a question I put to the company today. And then I looked, I said it went past 55 and went to 60. It went to 65 and then it got to 70, 75, 80. I'm like, oh my God. Sheila Price thought she'd die when her car suddenly sped to 90 on I-70. Her brakes wouldn't work. She finally got it into neutral and stopped. After our report, Hyundai contacted her, towed her car to a dealership and promised to get to the bottom of what happened. And I'm like, oh wow, you know, that's awesome. You know, that they're gonna step up to the plate and do something about the situation thanks to Channel 4. Sheila's experience isn't unique. A police camera caught an out of control Hyundai doing 120 in North Texas until it crashed, injuring the 16 year old driver. Hyundai says it wants to find out what happened, but doesn't think its vehicles have a problem with sudden acceleration, even though the government has investigated 10 incidents involving SUVs just like prices. These allegations are, are uh, alarming. Um, but because it's so unlikely that something could happen like this, we've got to figure out uh, uh, just what's going on. We ask why the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration hasn't issued a recall, and it said the agency is aware of the potential issue, is monitoring complaints and other data closely, and will take appropriate action as necessary. We will stay on top of Hyundai's investigation and tell you what they find. Russell Kinsall, News 4. Tonight, it's mystery solved. Police say they have the man responsible for killing the mother of a baby found abandoned in an apartment complex. Today, prosecutors charged DeAnthony Prouty with first degree murder. They claim the 40 year old shot Ebony Jackson in his apartment last month when she was getting ready to take a bath. They say he dumped her body in the trunk of her car. Police found it a few days later, just a few blocks from where Prouty lives in North St. Louis. The abandoned baby is doing fine and is back home in Oklahoma. Investigators aren't giving a possible motive. Here is quite a list of violent crime charges against a man in St. Peter's, choking one man until he passed out, choking another man, pushing a woman, and stealing her car. All charges against Brooks Hoy. Court documents show someone hit the 21-year-old over the head with a baseball bat just to get him to let go of one of the victims. 
Police say they caught Hoy after a short chase. A St. Charles woman did the right thing, reporting stolen goods she found on her property. That's unfortunate for her son. It landed him in jail, accused of having the goods from a burglary. Police say the mother of Stephen Mahler called a burglary victim after finding the victim's credit card in the front yard. Mahler's mom then gave police permission to search their home. Investigators say they found other stolen items, including the victim's rosary. How much influence did a school board president have in securing millions of dollars in projects for a construction company he works for? A state audit revealed he crossed the line and cost taxpayers in the Rockwood School District more than a million dollars. I went to Lafayette High School tonight where State Auditor Tom Schweik put the board on notice. It just makes me sick. We aren't joyous. This isn't a joyful day. This makes me sick. Eileen Tyrell founded the watchdog group that urged the state to audit Rockwood. Her concerns were well founded. Former school board president Steve Smith was also the project manager for Glen Construction, which has been awarded more than $11 million in bond related projects. Do you think this could have been avoided? This shouldn't, should have been avoided. We shouldn't be in this situation. Um, I think many of the practices have been going on a long time, a lot longer than many of the board members have, have been around. Um, and so you know, the key is that we learn from it and move on. And parents in this district can be assured that money will be better spent in the future. Most definitely, most definitely. The school board president just told me we absolutely will be in compliance, we'll do things differently. How confident are you that that'll be the case? Thank God for Tom Schweit, because it, because guess what? The district doesn't have our trust and they have to earn it back. The audit found no criminal violations. Schweik's office will follow up in 90 days to make sure the district is in compliance with its recommendations. We'll follow up to see if the district has been able to recoup any of the $1.2 million overpaid to the management company. News 4 never stops watching out for you, uncovering scams and ripoffs, questioning wasteful spending, getting the answers you need. Now, Chris Nagus and News 4 investigates. An investor taking advantage of the most vulnerable to fund a lavish lifestyle, a home in Ladue, a BMW, and a second home in Boston. A one-time Clayton power broker now accused of major fraud, in one case stealing a million dollars from a woman with dementia. Property records indicate this Ledoux home is owned by Gregory Campbell. By all accounts, he's a successful guy. But the Missouri Secretary of State spells out years of deceit masterminded by Campbell. It's very possible that this uh, could end up with criminal charges. Jason Kander's securities division lays out an incredible story. Campbell is accused of opening accounts for clients without authorization, forging signatures, and making unauthorized transfers in excess of $1.5 million to fund his lifestyle. Candor says Campbell tried to cover his tracks. Yeah, what it appears he was doing was he, he would change the address that a statement would go to um, so that the statements would no longer go to the client. According to the petition, Campbell diverted more than a million dollars from one client, an 86-year-old woman with dementia living in an assisted living facility. When I showed up at Campbell's Ledoux home, nobody answered. But I noticed a permit hanging in the window to build an addition. Candor's office also accuses Campbell of diverting client funds to pay for a BMW lease along with another home in Boston. So how did he get busted? How did your security division even find out about this? Um, in this case, actually, we found out because the firm where uh, Mr. Campbell was working um, reported it to us. Campbell worked for Merrill Lynch and Clayton. He resigned that job in 2011 and got hired by a firm affiliated with LPL Financial in Creve Corps. In a press release, Campbell said it is his role to be the CFO for each of his clients in their pursuit towards achieving their financial goals. Doesn't look like that worked out too well. LPL won't comment on anyone formally affiliated with the firm. Merrill Lynch says it's cooperating with law enforcement and will continue to do so. Bottom line, you can check out your broker to find out if he's accused of any wrongdoing. I've got a link on KMOV.com where you can enter your broker's name to see what he's been up to. This is a story we'll continue to track. Our attempts to reach Campbell at his home were unsuccessful, but if he wants to give his side of the story, we'll provide him equal time. Chris Nagus, News 4. Get Chris Nagus to work for you. Being ripped off? Do you see tax money being wasted? Email him at cnagus at kmov.com. A family is fighting a school district in court over what they call discrimination against their transgender six-year-old. The child was born a boy, but has been living as a little girl for several years.
When she was about 18 months and started to talk, as soon as she was able to, it was that she, she was a girl, she liked girl things. All was reportedly fine until Coy Mathis went to first grade at Eagleside Elementary in Colorado. In the middle of the school year, the parents got a letter from the district informing them some parents and students are likely to become uncomfortable with Coy's continued use of the girls' bathroom. We're hoping that, you know, that they will change their minds and they will come back and, and teach that you can love somebody and you can accept somebody even if they are different. The district also raised concerns over whether bullying might take place. New tonight, our cameras caught strong reactions from students over a plan to close more schools in St. Louis. To shut down a school that's successful is like shutting down a business because it has overstock. I believe that it's wrong. Superintendent Dr. Kelvin Adams laid out his proposal to the St. Louis Public School Board. Dr. Adams recommends moving the multiple pathways alternative program to Beaumont High School while eliminating 11th grade in that building. Sherman Elementary, Loverture Middle School and Fresh Start South are on the chopping block this fall. St. Louis schools may also phase out the Cleveland NJ ROTC school by not accepting new freshmen this fall. My sister, she already has been accepted and for me to have that experience and to know, okay, this is really good, like this is, this is up to par and she won't be able to experience that and it's really hard. My confusion is, is why are they going to shut down something that has been successful for the past years? The board is expected to vote March 14th on the closings. There are public hearings set up for students and parents to voice their opinions on March 2nd. We have those details on our website, KMOV.com. Tomorrow will be the last day as the leader of the Roman Catholic Church for Pope Benedict XVI. Today, the pontiff gave an emotional farewell in what's expected to be his last public appearance ever. 85-year-old is the first pope to resign in more than 600 years. So who will be the next pope? We're sending Chris Nagus to Rome for the conclave to choose Benedict's successor. Watch for his reports on News 4 and on KMOV.com. The 4-1 Storm Team. Certified St. Louis's most accurate forecast. Now here's Chief Meteorologist Steve Templeton. Wet roads, falling temperatures, not a good mix. We're already hearing about some problems yeah. on the roadways tonight in places like Lincoln County. Yeah, I mean, we got through the evening drive, but now we see all that dampness starting to ice over in spots, especially untreated spots. And like you said, Lincoln County is one of the bad ones out there. Now, here's the deal. A lot of the flurries and light snow has kind of tapered off. Take a look at the SkyTracker Doppler radar, and you'll see that uh, that big low pressure off to the northeast keeps spinning in these little uh, bouts of moisture out of the north-northwest, and lately it's calmed down. So mainly a couple flurries out there, not much else than that. You see a little bit of the gray here or there, which is just flurries. If we had some brighter whites, that would be a little snow shower. Wouldn't rule out an isolated sh snow shower, but I think through the overnight, most of this is going to be flurries. But the damage has been done because of the snow from earlier and the above freezing temperatures. It all melted, the pavement's damp. It still is, and now we're hitting freezing in Clayton at 32. It's 31 in New Haven, 31 in Warrington. I mentioned earlier, Highway 47 from Lincoln County to Warren County, Highway 61. So that area is... Uh, being highlighted by MoDOT is partially covered with some icy spots and temperatures. Even if they're at 32 now, they drop another degree. You get into more likelihood of some icing, mainly on untreated spots. But at midnight, I have us at 31, 5 a.m. 31, 8 a.m. 32. So watch for those slick spots. And again, while it is mainly untreated spots, there's no guarantee that a major highway has been has been treated. So you'd certainly want to uh, treat that carefully as you head out in the morning. We're going to be here tomorrow for you on News 4 this morning. Meteorologist Kent Earhart and our traffic guru. Roger Brand. They'll let you know exactly where those slick spots are developing. Mainly flurries, a spotty light snow. I'll tell you what, if you park outside, you may want to bring a brush out uh, because your car may have just a little dusting on it tomorrow morning when you head out. This cold flow coming in out of the northwest is because of that low. As the low pulls out, we still get this northwestern flow and that keeps us pretty much in the same type of weather. Cold, occasional flurries, and light snow. I don't expect as much snow as what we saw today, but still at times you get some flurries or a little burst of snow to move through and that's what we'll be dealing with yet again for tomorrow. Winter is in full control here as it's going to be a cold one again. 35 degrees at noon.
breezy on top of it. Wind chill down to the upper 20s. We're at 36 degrees by 5 o'clock. The high tomorrow, 38. So it's another day in the 30s with cloudy skies and a little bit of wind. And at times, those flurries and light snow, even at 9 o'clock, 33 degrees so above freezing. If we see any of those flurries or light snow actually collect and create some accumulation, mainly on grassy spots, it would be in the morning or overnight because that's when temperatures are below freezing. During the daytime, they would hit that pavement and melt off. And like today, you end up with some wet roads. So we're going to watch those overnight hours, early morning hours. That's when you have the best shot for some ice conditions. So Friday, 36, flurries or light snow. We do it again on Friday, next two days. Now Saturday, just some morning flurries, but then dry in the afternoon, partly cloudy. Cold, 32 degrees though. And on Sunday, 36, it looks dry and partly cloudy. Like I said, winter in control. When all the high temperatures start with a three, you know it's still winter, even though March is right around the corner. 38 degrees for the four degree guarantee for tomorrow for Heat Up St. Louis, the last day to add some money to our donation. We're at 800. Let's make that 850 and end on a high note for the month of February. Next couple days, flurries, spot snow showered. Highs are going to be pretty cold in the 30s. And boy, Saturday, especially a chilly day as we get into the weekend. It does warm up Monday to 45. We do have a storm coming through Tuesday that could produce a chance of rain or a little bit of a mix as well. And we'll have to keep a close eye on that one for you. But I think my biggest concern right now is that damp pavement uh, icing over on untreated spots especially for tomorrow morning so we'll have to watch that all right and we will the whole team you thanks bet. Steve. thank you steve talk about testing a marriage wait until you hear an ambitious plan for a private flight to send a couple to orbit mars now sharon reed steve savard and chief meteorologist steve templeton this is news four at ten well, you know, if the economy is so bad, teachers resort to using their own money now, many as much as $500 a year. They're seeking donations at this point to fund school projects. Today, I spoke with a couple of teachers who've found those creative ways to overcome financial hurdles to make sure students do not suffer. They're now using websites like DonorsChoose.org. Websites like that one allow the teacher to sell a project in the hopes of average Joes like you and me that will buck up and help them out financially. These days, with everybody strapped for cash, teachers are turning to these alternative methods. Do you feel like this is the wave of the future? Does it solve a lot of the problems that we have now? It really does. I mean, we spend a lot of our own money and we still will continue to do that. But this has really helped us get some things for the kids that I never thought was possible because I couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. So right. it's really helpful. It's picking up steam before this project, many of the books these children read were either torn, they had missing pages. When I asked the teachers, is it just too much that they are now salesmen too? They said, hey, part of the job now, Steve. Well, are you willing to take a trip with your spouse? Before you answer, there are some conditions here. It'll take 16 months and you'll be close, really close, sharing space half the size of an RV. The destination is Mars. Today, a private nonprofit project announced its plans for Inspiration Mars. The technical details are still in the works, but the group hopes to send a married couple to take a pass around Mars with a launch in 2018. Cardinal pitcher Michael Waka dominates the Mets and then gets high praise from Yadier Molina. And it doesn't seem to matter who the Billikens play, they are going down. Highlights from tonight's game at Shavitz coming up next in sports. Now, News for Sports, powered by the Baseball STL app. Cardinals news, scores, and stats, free in your phone's app store. Make it 10 in a row for the Billikens. St. Joseph's the preseason favorite in the 8-10. No match for the Billiken buzzsaw tonight. Nobody plays tougher defense than the Bills. Dwayne Evans is going to say, get that out of here. Big block by Evans. He had three blocks, 21 points, 12 rebounds. Jordair Jett, Steven Jackson in tennis shoes. Drives to the lane, gets the bucket, and one. I'm not sure why there was a pig at the game. I just don't have that answer for you. Not sure what he was doing. Bills led by only two at the half. Broken open second half fast break. Clemay Mitchell scores with the layup. Evans played like a man possessed. He would not be denied. Got the offensive board here. Scored against heavy pressure. Billikens continue to roll 70 to 53. They improved to 22 and 5, 11 and 2 in the A-10. The Blues have put Andy McDonald on injured reserve. He hurt his knee yesterday in practice. He is listed as week to week. Adam Cracknell has been called up from Peoria. Cardinals continue to tear the cover off the ball down in Florida. Scored 12 runs today against the Mets. Carlos Beltran drove home two with that double. Almost caught out there. That was the key hit in a four-run third inning. They scored four more in the fourth. 
Yadier Molina with a two-run double into the corner and left. Cardinals had 14 hits. They've scored 37 runs now in the last three games. Shane Robinson had a double, a home run, three RBIs, and four runs scored. Michael Waka dominant on the mound. Pitched three shutout innings, allowed only one hit, struck out five. Brian Feldman reports that Waka impressed his all-star catcher with the way he was throwing today. Three more shutout innings from first-round pick Michael Waka and five total here in spring training. Yadier Molina is not one to make blunt statements, but he did not hold back regarding Waka's future. That guy right now can pitch in the building, so that's, that's the way I look at it. He got a great stuff. He got a, a great person uh, on the mound. Um, uh, I feel that, he, that that guy can pitch right now in the building. That is quite a compliment, you know. Uh, I mean, I trust him behind the plate, you know. I don't really ever shake off whenever he's calling pitches back there. So, you know, I trust him, and, you know, he's working good back there, you know. I uh, felt confident throwing anything I wanted, any count, so it's, it's nice. I'm sure that's a huge compliment for Michael to get from Yachty. And uh, but my comment is that uh, he's, he's just uh, – He's doing a nice job when we give him, give him the ball. He goes out there and he's been making good pitches. Make sure you check out KMOV.com along with our Baseball STL app. I recently wrote about Matt Adams and what the Cardinals may have to do with him potentially being blocked by Alan Craig at first base. With the Cardinals, Brian Feldman, News 4 Sports. Great night. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Good night, everybody.